yesterday, Sieroji said that the practice of satipatthana is for controlling oneself, learning to govern oneself. Most people of the world aren't able to control themselves. They aren't able to keep their minds clean. And so there are many problems in the world. Just look at the world, the uh, number of places where war is occurring, where fighting is occurring, where injustice occurs. So when one, because one can't control or eliminate the internal enemy with the reliable, correct method, because of that, there is a complete array of social problems in the world. And these problems are very complex. And due to such problems, uh, there must be the intervention of law or government to control human behavior. When we practice satipatthana and our morality becomes complete, then there's no need for external law for oneself because one can guarantee that one is not going to do any harm. And for uh, a group of people, a community of people who can, um, who practices and can develop this type of um, situation, they can definitely gain peace both on an individual level and for their community. Without satipatthana, there is no way to gain peace. So seeing that satipatthana is is what can bring us individual peace and that this is a most important means for bringing peace not only to ourselves, especially to ourselves most importantly, but to those around us. People seeing this come here to practice. And um, you know, being understanding that one can uh, that one needs to work to eliminate the gross um, misdeeds, the moderate misdeeds and the refined misdeeds, that one needs to work to eliminate these. Eliminating such misdeeds, one also eliminates the danger the major dangers which can come to one. First of all, when one does something wrong, one, one knows it and one blames oneself. When one realizes uh, the wrong that one did. And further, one is criticized by others when one commits gross, medium, refined misdeeds. One furthermore, if one has broken the law, then one is subject to punishment by law. And one whose physical, verbal, and mental behavior has become base does not have a good life either in this life or in the ones to come. They just experience bad results. So these are the four major dangers which are to be feared. Of course, there are many other things to be feared connected with misdeeds. So when one practices this Dhamma one develop, and one develops good morality, one is able to keep one's mind clean and to whatever one extent it, one is able to, one develops knowledge. Mm -hmm. In this way one becomes a person who can master themselves. And one will, because of this, one will be considered 
a person, one will be known as a person who does not create any trouble for one's environment. To rule, to govern. Government is not, should not be done by force. It's not correct to rule by force. If rulers apply force to govern, then the people hate that use of power and they will never be satisfied with those ruling them. On the other hand, if people don't rule by force, but rule by just means, then the people will love and cherish those leaders, that group. Because when people, um, such people, such governments don't, don't commit wrong, at least not on a large scale. And when they do, they admit it. And such rulers understand how to rule by Dhamma, by investigating and learning how to rule by Dhamma. So such people um, are able to lead. What's most important, more important, is to learn to rule oneself. When one can govern oneself, then one can keep one's life from falling apart, from being scattered, from being aimless. One should have the courage, um, sorry, when one has the courage to do things which are wrong, this is not good. When one, uh, when one has the courage to do what is wrong, then one is not focusing one's attention wisely. One is not, um, one's mind is becoming, um, the type of concentration one has is wrong and what knowledge one has is also wrong. So when one is not working in a just way, one can't, one doesn't look, know how to control oneself. One doesn't know how to uh, lead one's environment, control one's environment, or control one's family. One can't, one can't be a leader. And thus one's, one's ruling, rulership is destroyed. So in the world, because individuals do not, are not able to control themselves, then on a group level, the societies also, groups are not able to control themselves. And yesterday, CROG mentioned this. The word in Pali for uh, ruling is indriya. It means to govern or to government, governing factor, ruling factor. And there are five of these. The first is faith. Faith in the basic knowledge that when we do something good, it brings good results. When we do something bad, it brings bad results. Faith in this understanding, this basic knowledge is very important. One knows that if one avoids bad food, eating bad food, one will therefore, um, one won't get bad results. And it, one knows that if one just eats randomly, one will randomly get some bad results. And therefore one one also knows that one has, one has to eat good food, what is good for, our, for oneself in moderation, in order to have good health. And 
understanding this, one also understands that in the same way as we have to avoid eating bad food to get bad results and eat good food in moderation to get good results, so too we have to avoid bad actions. And if we avoid bad actions, then, um, then we will avoid the bad results. But if one doesn't have this basic faith in the fact that good things bring, bring good results and bad things bring, bring bad results, if one thinks that it doesn't matter what one does, then from based on that faith, one makes effort in the wrong way. One carries out things that are harmful. One's attention is the, is that comes from a, one's making effort is also wrong. One's uh, concentratedness is also applied in the wrong way, and what arises is is knowledge that is twisted. It's not accurate, and in that way, one's own ability to control oneself is ruined because it, of the basis one has a, a false basis for acting. So in order for that not to happen, one has to fulfill one's energies. First, the energy of faith, with this basic understanding of good, good brings good, bad brings bad. One has to fulfill one's, uh, the energy of one's cur courage. One has to have the courage to avoid doing, saying, and, and planning things that bring bad results and to carry out things that do good results and to continue in this vein. One has to have the courage in these, in these areas. If there is courageous effort in this way, then sati will follow collected, collectedness of mind and then knowledge. So in this way, mental powers become amazingly strong. And then, because of strong faith, for example, when there's something that comes up that could destroy one's faith, that could disturb one's faith, one's faith is not destroyed by that. And although one has the um, opportunity to commit m misdeeds, for example, uh, one has the courage to avoid. One doesn't, one doesn't go that direction even though the opportunity arises. One sati becomes even stronger, samadhi and panya. So when these controlling powers become strong, they can govern very well. And this will eliminate problems both for oneself as an individual and for those around one. The Buddha, seeing this, taught a method for developing self-control, for learning how to govern oneself. For these ruling factors, these dhammas starting with correct faith, to become powerful, when they do, then they can then government, sorry, then they can govern. So for these to become strong, it doesn't happen without cause. It doesn't happen just by reading, nor by discussion. These five factors, starting with faith, don't become strong by an act of God. They don't come, become strong by our wishing for them or for, by <clears throat> making it happen by force. There are nine causes for the governing factors, the indriyas, to become strong. And with these nine factors, one can strengthen the indriyas. That's, they, there's these, five, these nine factors make the indriyas keen and sharp, clear. So this is what happens. And the first of these nine factors is that one has to observe to the point where one can see 
how the mind and matter within one's body, the base, the striker, and the spark, arise and pass away. So one has, with faith in the practice, one applies effort and aiming to observe the object. And the yogis are doing this, starting with the rising and the falling. The yogis try to observe every object that arises, applying ardent effort and accurate aiming so that one doesn't miss. And these objects which arise in the body, they come and go very quickly. So one has to try, try hard to catch them. So one has to work to see at this level. In one's body, the mind and matter, nama and rupa, are connected with each other. And they have, they all have their own characteristic, their own special quality. And they have characteristics in common, too. That is, they all arise and then pass away. To know them as they are, one has to observe at the very moment of arising, observing the, the rising when it happens, the falling, every seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, touching, lifting, moving, placing, bending, stretching, blinking, opening the, and closing the eyes. So in the moment that these actions occur, one has to observe them. And then one will see their individual characteristics. And in time, one comes to see the common characteristics. One sees how the old is continually being replaced by the new. And to see how mind and matter arise and pass away depends on working respectfully. That means to behave as, as, as if one is a sick person. When one gets up, one, one has to perform actions slowly, carefully. One has to keep one's attention inside. Working respectfully means um, behaving as if sick, behaving as if blind, behaving as if deaf, and so on. And if one just looks here and there as one practices, if one gets up quickly, sits down quickly, bends and stretches quickly, then this is not respect for the practice. The second cause for the, for the indriyas to become strong is satacha kiriya, to, while we are behaving, like doing our actions like a sick person, like a blind person, and so on, one has to work so that one's observation is continuous. So that means that uh, one has to make one's sittings, one's walkings, one's activities, all one's activities have to be a continuous stream of observation without breaks in between. So one has to examine oneself. One shouldn't go, by the way, one shouldn't go far from the Dhamma Hall in order to walk, medit do the walking meditation because uh, it can break one's continuity. So one has to examine oneself, to ask oneself, am I observing in a continuous manner? When I get up from the sitting, do I let everything go? Do I continue my practice? Or is the sitting, uh, is the, sitting the only time I practice? 
So one has to uh, examine all the parts of one day, one's day to see, you know, when I take a shower, when I wash my face, when I use the toilet, am I applying full awareness in all those actions? And so that one has to work continuously. The third factor is sapaya kiriyaya. And that means, um, sapaya means what is suitable for oneself, what is suitable for oneself as a yogi. And there are, are seven types of things that need to be suitable. And the first is awasa sapaya. That means that one's dwelling should be quiet. Gotra sapaya means that uh, for monks, it means that where, they're, where they go for alms round should not be too far away nor too close. For yogis, one simply goes to the dining hall, so there's no problem with this. And the third is baza, baza sapaya. And that means the teacher or individual teacher should be suitable. The third is one's speech should be suitable. And that means that one should speak just with the teacher. And the speech that one does should be suitable. Pogala sapaya means that the instructor should be suitable. They should instruct according to the method. And then bojana sapaya, the food and the drink that we eat should be suitable. And there could be some problems in this area, but one has to be patient with the food and the drink. To the, uh, to the best of their abilities, the people here are trying to uh, provide food that is suitable. Uru sapaya, that means that the weather should be good. And the weather now is quite good. Uh, it's not too cold and it's not too hot. And the last of the seven is Iriyapata sapaya. That means our posture should be suitable. We shouldn't just sit all the time. We shouldn't just walk. We can't just stand all the time. We can't just lie down all the time. There has to be a balance between our postures. And if we, if we balance our postures and don't do too much of any one, then, that, then we have balance of posture or iriya pata sapaya. And Sierraji is just, in about three days, he will explain about this. But for now, he's just giving you the, the headings. So uh, all these seven types of suitability, Sierraji believes, are mostly OK. So when we have this situation, we should, when we have a suitable situation like this, we should try. But another thing is, too, that also some, sometimes things are okay for us, and sometimes they're not. And at those times, one can change one's mind. One can change one, what one is focusing on and um, get back to a situation where one feels comfortable again with one's practice. So to explain, like when we eat, uh, when we eat, what we eat sometimes says, tastes good to us and sometimes it doesn't. But when we remember the good food that we used to eat, we can sometimes feel the good flavors again. And people here uh, have been practicing for a while and sometimes one's practice isn't going well, one do, one's noting isn't going well. But if one reflects back on the time when one's meditation was good, 
so one thinks back to when, when, when was it good? And then one remembering that time, one remembers how one practiced at that time. And by doing that again, by practicing in the way that one did, when one's practice was good, one can get back to a good situation in one's practice. One can overcome the difficulty. Oh, and working in this way makes the controlling faculties very special. So among the nine causes which make our ruling faculties, our indriyas, strong, these first five which Sayadaroji has mentioned are quite enough. If these first five factors that Sayadaroji has mentioned, first of all, to see that mind and matter are arising and passing away. Well, they are already arising and passing away on their own. So that is not something we have to do. Well, all we have to do is to try to be able to observe this. And one needs to work respectfully. That's the second cause. Third, one has to work continuously without taking breaks. And fourth, one has to have suitability of place and so on. And then fifth, one has to, when one's noting is not going well, one has to remember, recollect the times when one was practicing effectively. So if one fulfills these first five, then one's dhamma is sure to advance. So for now, um, Sayadawji has to leave aside uh, the topic of how to balance the factors of enlightenment, the bojangas, and how to, sorry, with regard to pain, how to, how to, how to, how to get to the point of overcoming pain. So for now he has to leave those topics aside because he has to go to Yangon. But he has, uh, he hopes that and trusts that all of you will use this method and practice according to the instructions and become people who are able to rule their, themselves. <laughs>